Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Crystal and in today's video, I'm going to be talking all about hormonal acne. Hormonal acne is related to hormone fluctuations and it usually happens the week before your period starts and usually during your period as well. The nice thing if you can say there's a nice thing about hormonal acne, is that it usually resolves after your period ends. So there's a few reasons why hormonal acne happens, one of them being like genetic. But the other big reason is that when you are in the luteal phase of your cycle, especially in your premenstrual phase, usually that's when you might have higher progesterone levels, but you might also experience an increase in testosterone levels as well. Testosterone can actually tell your body and your skin to create more sebum, which is the oil your skin produces. And progesterone is known to do this as well. So oftentimes you might notice that your skin is like a lot oilier. And that's usually just because at this time of your cycle, you're more prone to producing more sebum. And sebum's great, like it moisturizes your face, like there's nothing wrong with sebum. But a buildup of sebum can lead to clogged pores and that is how acne ends up developing. So acne is basically when like a clogged pore gets inflamed and your body is kind of trying to like fight off that inflammation. So it's not uncommon to have acne just like everywhere if you're experiencing hormonal acne, but usually it happens on the lower half of your face. So like your jawline and your chin. I know that sometimes can be my problem area is my chin, um, but it can also like affect your chest and your back. And depending on your age and how much sebum you're producing, it can affect those areas um, in different ways. Like you might experience more acne maybe on your chest or your back when you're younger. And then when you get a little bit older, it might end up coming up more in your chin or jaw area. So acne Acne types that may form if you're experiencing hormonal acne can be pretty much like all acne types. So whiteheads, blackheads, papules, which are sore red bumps that don't necessarily come to a head, um, but they're quite sore and tender to touch, as well as pustules, which usually have a little bit of pus underneath them. They're a little bit different than whiteheads because they're usually a little bit bigger and they're a little bit more tender um, and inflamed. You might also experience cysts and nodules. So cysts or nodules are like super, super painful like lumps that kind of develop under the skin. A lot of people experience them on their jawline. That is like a common kind of type of hormonal acne. But in this video today, the things I'm going to be talking about to treat hormonal acne are not really made for like cystic kind of um, hormone related acne. If you're experiencing cysts or nodules and they're extremely painful, um, it's definitely something to talk to a healthcare professional about because those kind of things usually need a little bit more of a targeted treatment. Other than that, hormonal acne like whiteheads, blackheads, you know, some other kind of red bumps and stuff is usually pretty easy to treat like on your own with different topical treatments, different diet and lifestyle things, um, as well as maybe some more aggressive treatments that you'd have to talk to your healthcare professional about. The thing to know about hormonal acne is that it does get better as you get older. <laughs> So like, trust me when I say that, it does get better with age. So if you're watching this and you're in your teens or your 20s, like, I promise you, things get better. And I also want you to know that hormonal acne, while it is something that can be helped and supported with like, a bunch of different things that we're gonna talk about in just a minute, it's also not always 100% preventable, right? Like your hormones sometimes they can play games and you can do everything in the world to try to like stop um, hormonal acne from happening but sometimes it's, it's just not 100% preventable so I don't want you to like leave this video thinking that like the tips that I give you is gonna like 100% like cure everything there's a lot of factors that play into hormonal acne and I just want you to know that no matter what at the end of the day you're beautiful your skin's beautiful and I just wanted you to know that but I also know that you probably want some tips and tricks. So when it comes to hormone related acne, there's kind of like three things uh, that can help. So that is topical treatments, addressing diet and lifestyle. And then if those two things don't work and you've tried everything, then it is a good idea to look at more like, I guess I would say like aggressive treatments. But let's just talk first about topical treatments. If you are producing a lot of sebum, especially in your like luteal phase of your cycle, which is the second half of your cycle, I would definitely recommend looking towards using a basic gentle cleanser and cleansing your skin in the morning and at night. Now, of course, you don't want to over 
do it because you don't want to like strip these oils off of your face believe me i've been there done that it's not good but you do want to make sure that you're kind of trying to like clean your skin and having good hygiene one thing you can do is you can get a cleanser that does have an active ingredient in it like salicylic acid which helps kind of clean the pores out some skincare products are great for acne some can kind of irritate acne like we all have different skin needs and if your skin is really sensitive what works for your best friend might not necessarily work for you so there is a little bit of a trial and error to kind of finding out what skincare routine um, will work for you but best thing you can do is find a basic cleanser that's going to um, help cleanse your face and of course you also want to find like a non-irritating moisturizer as well as sunscreen sunscreen is really important it also helps protect against hyperpigmentation and i don't know about you but when i get acne or when i break out my acne like instantly hyperpigmentates. So definitely make sure that you have a basic gentle cleanser, moisturizer that works for your skin, and make sure that you find a sunscreen that works for you. Now on top of that, so that's kind of like a basic routine that you kind of want to have down. There are a lot of things that have been proven to help with acne, especially hormonal acne. So like I've mentioned, salicylic acid is one of those things that can help. It helps by like unclogging pores and dissolving sebum. It's really, really great. Now, if you are experiencing a little bit more of like an aggressive hormonal acne, there is always benzoyl peroxide. And that has been proven to really help with acne because it actually helps to fight like acne bacteria. So those are two things that are pretty easy to find, evidence-based, that can help reduce acne. Some other things that can help reduce acne is uh, az azelic acid. I'm probably gonna say these words wrong. I know you all realize that I'm not great at pronouncing things, but azelaic acid, azelaic acid, <laughs> has been proven time and time again to be great for acne. Now you can find azelaic acid um, in different like concentrations, in different brands. If you're looking for something that's a little bit higher strength, you might need to talk to a doctor about that. There's also products with niacinamide, which can be also very, very helpful because they actually control the sebum um, that your skin like produces. And I know for me, niacinamide and zinc that combination which i actually buy from the ordinary is is so good for my skin and i know a lot of brands make like a niacinamide kind of zinc combination but like this has been game changing for me the best part about this product is it's also five bucks or something like it's super cheap it's amazing y'all it's amazing i know it doesn't work for everyone's skin but i definitely recommend it if you're looking for like a kind of a more affordable product to use oh my goodness it's helped me so much and if all of those things fail and they don't work another option which usually is by prescription although you can find it over the counter and in, in some products depending on like the concentration is retinoids that is like the og of helping with acne um, and skin conditions it's usually what's prescribed by a doctor if you are struggling with acne things like retinols can be hard on sensitive skin and they're not something that you would use like every day these are all products that you need to look into i want you to know that i am not a skincare expert i love skincare i guess you would say i'm a skincare enthusiast this is just things that i've researched that i found um, to be supported by evidence but it's really important to talk to someone about it or to do your own research and see like what would work for my skin like what are my symptoms what am i actually dealing with here and so i just want to let you know that these products are out there and so if you're interested like go out and look them up look up these like medical ingredients and see um, what would be the most benefit to you now moving on after you have like a pretty good skincare routine going for you it's really really important to address your diet and lifestyle y'all diet and lifestyle play a huge part in your skin what can actually cause your body to produce a little bit more testosterone is like higher insulin levels and so if you're eating a lot of like processed sugar and that kind of food then like that could be triggering that in your body um, which could then be leading to more acne and so it's really 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 important to make sure that you are eating as best you can I'm not saying you can't have your treats but if you are struggling with hormonal acne your diet is definitely something that you're gonna be wanting to look at another thing that can potentially 
cause you to have like higher insulin levels and trigger IGF-1, which then can trigger <laughs> testosterone and cause acne and stuff, is dairy. Y'all know how I feel about dairy. If you are including dairy in your diet and you're really struggling with hormonal acne or just acne in general, dairy and whey protein can really trigger it. So I definitely recommend like cutting down or eliminating dairy. There's so many alternatives now. You you don't need it. The other thing that you want to make sure that you're focusing on is like high fiber, rich foods, right? Fiber is super good for you, balances your blood sugar, super amazing, and that's found in like all plant foods. So try your best to just um, eat well. <laughs> I know that can be hard when you're premenstrual because like I know what it's like. Sometimes you just want to eat the whole chocolate bar and stuff, and I'm not saying you can't, but these things can potentially um, exacerbate acne. So it is really important to make sure that you're eating well. Also very, very important to make sure that you're staying hydrated. Water is so important. It's really great for skin. It's not going to like cure your skin problems, but hydration is super, super important. So that's another thing. Another thing to be aware of is that B12 supplementation can potentially in some people aggravate acne. So if you're struggling with hormonal acne and you take like a daily B12 supplement, if it's like a higher dose supplement, it could potentially be aggravating things. Now B12 supplementation is important for everyone, so I'm not saying just like stop supplementing B12, but you could potentially experiment with taking like a lower dose. It's usually the higher doses that can potentially trigger things. This doesn't happen in everyone, but it is a thing and I wanted to mention it because I know some people who have struggled with acne realize that they're taking these huge amounts of B12 and then once they kind of cut back, it really helps. Another thing that can really help acne is zinc supplementation. Zinc is really great for skin. It might not be what you need, but I know for some people zinc can be really, really helpful. And so that's my little piece on diet let's move to lifestyle because there's a few lifestyle changes that you can make that will help decrease your kind of chances of having hormonal acne and the first one is reducing your stress stress is the worst it is so bad so the less stress the better i know it's easier said than done but stress can really affect things it can really affect your skin. So it's really important to try to make sure that you are doing a lot of self-care, reducing your stress, taking care of yourself. Another thing that's really important is to make sure that you're washing your pillowcase. How often are you reminded to wash your pillowcase? Probably not a lot. And you know what? Those things can even make a difference when it comes to acne. And another thing is to stop smoking. So I don't know how many of you still, you know, smoke or smoke occasionally or whatever, but smoking has been linked to adult acne, which can also then be linked to hormonal acne it could potentially be a trigger so it's important to like cut back or or quit if you're struggling with acne it can really exacerbate things one other thing that can help is exercising and sweating i know it kind of sounds counterproductive but sweating is really good kind of clears everything out the only thing you want to make sure of is if you are exercising and sweating that you are like washing your face after because you don't want that sweat to get trapped but these are all things that you can do that should like prevent and manage any hormonal acne that you you're experiencing if you are someone who's like worked on your skincare routine you're really good with diet and lifestyle you've made all these changes and you are still persistently experiencing hormonal acne and you're like what is going on and it's really painful it affects your quality of life I get it I understand then that's when you want to probably seek out professional help and see a dermatologist or someone that can help you kind of build a routine um, and give you some prescriptions that may help. So if you do talk to your dermatologist or your doctor, they will probably talk to you about a few different options that you have. So the first option would be hormonal birth control and that would be a combination birth control. So that would be with an estrogen and then progestin, and that would be like an anti-androgen progestin. So that's going to be an option, and that's an option that a lot of people use. And I want you to know that like for a lot of people, it does help. A lot of people use hormonal birth control for skin condition. And of course there are side effects. It's a medication, right? But I want you to know that your doctor might recommend that as um, like the first kind of step in treatment. There's other treatments that you might be offered that you might need to take birth control for. So for example, there's this really common thing. It's like an oral retinol that you take um, and you have to be on birth control to take it really really aggressive for clearing up skin so it's more for people that have really um, bad skin conditions and of course again it comes with 
side effects and risks but it's really important to know that these things I guess are out there right like you should know that these things are out there and these are options and you should research them before just like taking a prescription that your doctor um, suggests so you are aware of how it might affect you so if it does affect you in a negative way then you can tell your doctor and you can come off of it other things that your healthcare professional might recommend is oral medications like spirolactolone which is a common medication that is given that can help with skin as well um, it's not necessarily made for <laughs> for skin issues but it's kind of like off-label use is um, for skin stuff and then of course there might be oral antibiotics that might be used in combination with some of these things these are more aggressive treatments and so these are for people that have stubborn hormonal acne that does not get any benefits from any of the other stuff that we've talked about and these things are kind of um, like the last step to help and so I wanted to mention them in this video because I know it's really easy for me as someone who like clearly has pretty clear skin to come and make a video and just be like just eat vegetables and just drink water like it'll be fine that might not work for you okay and so i wanted to talk about more aggressive treatments because that's that might be where you're at or that might be your next step and it's important to know that these things are out there um, and it's important to talk with your healthcare professional if you are struggling with really really persistent really painful hormonal acne because there's a lot of options out there and i just like to include all the options in my videos holistic as well as medical i guess you could say so if you have any questions or if i missed anything in this video please let me know in the comments i love having like these discussions in the comments and i love hearing from you like what has helped you the most on your skincare journey i know for me the most helpful thing on my skincare journey is having a basic skincare routine and just understanding that when I'm approaching my period, my skin changes. And then I have a few products that target these changes. And that's been game changing for me. And I would love to know what's helped you. And so as always, your cycle matters so, so much. And I'm here for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.